How you guys doing? I want to talk to you guys today about the, the being face to face with God. This is amazing subject that we that, that that really should be a life pursuit for every believer, every Christian, every pastor, every prophet, every evangelist. We should all seek to to experience God face to face. And uh, it's a privilege that we have to know this beautiful Savior, to know this Lord, to know this God that's personal because we serve a God that can be known. You know, there's a lot of religions and world religions that teach that God is far off in a distance somewhere. He's off on some distant universe and, he, you know, he maybe he'll come in, in, in from time to time. But we serve a God that can be felt that can be experienced, that does miracles today, signs, wonders, miracles, healings, deliverances. He, 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 he touches us with his, his sweet presence daily if we would seek him. He, he speaks to us uh, audibly. He speaks to us through dreams, through visions, all these things. And so God can be encountered. That's what separates God from Buddha, from all these other world religions, is that the God of the universe can be experienced. The God of the Christian of Christians is not some dead, um, dead idol, but he's a real living God that can be, can has a voice and speaks, moves in power, moves in demonstration. And so one of my favorite verses to get this point across is Exodus 33, but, um, we're going to talk about the real quickly, the face of God, what does that mean? So in Hebrew, the Hebrew word for face is panim, uh, and, and it means face for presence, for presence in Hebrew. The word for presence in Hebrew is panim and it means face. So when you experience God's presence, you're experiencing God's face. And that's beautiful. So a life lived in the presence is a life lived face to face with God. That's nothing more beautiful than that. There's nothing more beautiful than to say you've been face to face with God, that you've that you live a life of the seek in the secret place. You live a life clothed in the presence of God. And so Moses was a man that knew the glory. He knew the presence. He knew the, he knew the ways of God. He knew the acts of God. He knew the character of God. He knew the nature of God. And you can walk with God like Moses did. Moses is not, a, he was a normal man that was in love with God. And you can be that person. You can experience God. You can know him. And uh, that's so beautiful about the New Testament that we were distant. We were far off from God because of the sin of Adam. Because what Adam did, Adam ate of the, uh, ate of the fruit. And he destroyed the intimacy. The intimacy between us was destroyed, but God restored it. God restored it. And so let me tell you something. You can be face to face with God. You can know God intimately. You can hear his voice. You can hear the voice of God. You can encounter him uh, in a deep, profound way. So in Exodus 33, uh, 11, it says, and so the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face, just as a man speaks to his friend. When Moses returned to the camp, his attendant Joshua, the son of man, uh, the son of Nun, a young man would not depart from the tent. Though the tent was where he met God. The tent represents the secret place. It represents your place, your time with God. That can be in your car. That can be in your home. That can be in a prayer closet. That, uh, that That's just a lifestyle, honestly, of hosting the presence of God, of walking with God's presence, walking with God, Holy Spirit, everywhere you go. And so Moses was a man that was was dedicated to a, to, to the tent. That's in the Old Testament. That's where they met with God because they didn't have the access that we do through the blood of Jesus. And so they had to meet with God in the tent, in the in the tabernacle, in the tent, which which was portable. And so Moses would daily, continually spend time communing with God in the tent and experiencing God face to face. The scripture says that he spoke with God, uh, that God spoke with him face to face. Uh, let's go back up to verse 10. It says, when all the people saw the pillar of cloud, the cloud in the Old Testament represents the glory of God, which we've taught that the glory of God is a manifest presence of God. It's, it's when God's presence invades heaven, invades the natural realm. The presence of God that's in heaven invades the natural realm and can be felt in the in the in the tangible sense, in the four, in the five senses. That means we can feel him. We can literally feel him uh, with our physical touch. We can feel God. Well, God can be felt like that. There are times where his presence comes on me in such an intense way that, you know, that it just, you know, I mean, it's it's like I'm in I'm walking, 
in the atmosphere of heaven, and that's because I am. Because of presence is the atmosphere of heaven that we that we can carry. We can carry the atmosphere of heaven, and so the presence of God is the face of God uh, in Scripture. So as we spend time in prayer, as we seek His face daily, we are experiencing this face to face intimate devotion with God. And you have access. As so many Christians are. Uh, are, are not praying. So many Christians have never experienced God. You don't know when I talk about this, how many believers write me and say, I've never encountered God. I've never, you know, I've been in church my whole life and I've never heard a sermon like this on, on, on that I can know God personally. I've never experienced this. And it breaks my heart because if we're not in church to experience face to face with God, we're not in, in church to encounter the presence of God. If we're not in, in church to know the person of Jesus, then why are we even going to church? Well, church is not about money. Church is not about getting your blessing. Church is not about getting your, your breakthrough. That's not what this gospel, that's not what this book is about. This book is about encountering a person, the person of Jesus Christ, the God in, incarnate as the son of God. So that's what this Bible is about. It's not about us getting a breakthrough. You know, these Christians, the early church died for this word. They died for that person, that beautiful star, beautiful savior. That's who they died for. They live for him. And so we have to get past thinking that this thing is about blessing, it's about finance, it's about the prophetic, this is about Jezebel, this is about anything. This is about one person and it's about the person of God, the person of Jesus Christ. That's what this whole book is about. That's what this whole Christianity is about. It says Christian, Christ follower. And when that, when the, uh, or the early church, before we were called, they were called Christians in the book of Acts, they were called followers of the way. The way, because Jesus was, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So they talked, they called them followers of the way. And actually Christian was a derogatory term. So we have to understand that this Christian life is a life of complete and total devotion to God. You know, in the Old Testament, there was a veil that separated the outer court, the inner court from the holies of holies. And that veil could only, you can only go back into the holies of holies during the day of, day of atonement. But Jesus tore the veil when he died on Calvary's cross so that you could go into the holy place, so that you can be intimate with God, that you can hear his voice in the holies of holies, that you can experience his glory, this uh, pillar of cloud who represents the glory of God that Moses experienced daily. Moses was in an inferior cover. The Old Testament was an inferior cover to the new. And so we can walk in the same glory and power that Moses did. We can walk in the same miracle power and the glory of God. And I believe this end time generation is a Moses type uh, type. In shadow. I believe this end time generation is going to have the power and the demonstration of Moses, miracle power, deliverance power. And so God is releasing that anointing, the anointing of Moses on this generation. But with that anointing comes deep and profound intimacy, deep and profound visitation of the Holy Spirit in your personal life. So many of us want to get on Facebook and we want to we want to preach and we want to talk, but we have not seen God face to face. We have not encountered the face of God. We have not encountered the presence of God. And so what do you have to say if you have not encountered God? We don't have a message, preachers, if we have not encountered him first in the secret place. We've not encountered him. We have not been struck by his His majesty, his beauty, his uh, his his his, his uh, been undone in his presence. So his, his presence is everything. There is nothing that we come to church for. There's nothing that we, I am a to the presence of God and presence of God is, is the, the key to coming out of your perversion to come out of sin is becoming falling in love with the presence. One of my favorite songs is I'm a lover of his presence. Well, Moses in the Bible was a lover of the presence of God. He was a lover after the presence, after the face of God. He was addicted. He was completely and totally addicted and infatuated with the face of God. And I believe God is wanting to raise up a generation that's addicted to his face, that's addicted to time in his presence. I'm not talking about five and 10 minutes. I'm talking about hours and hours with the Lord, worshiping, spending time on your face before him, crying out for his glory, crying out for his fire to mark our lives, that we would carry the presence of God like Moses did, like Enoch did. We can walk with God till we're no more, uh, you know, these things. And so, so many people get so content so many people get so content with their walk with the Lord. So many people get so content in the outer court. So many people get content with that. But I'm telling you, God is calling us higher. God is calling us to a higher dimension. He's calling us to a higher place. He's calling us to walk with him, to know him, to fellowship with him. And he's calling us uh, to go past the veil. And so it says, and it says, when all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the uh, tent door, all the people would rise and worship.
So when the glory comes, there's an ease in worship. There's an ease in when the glory come, God just entered the into the room. When God, when it, when the glory come, God is upon you when He comes upon your life. And it says, and so the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face, just as a man speaks to a friend. So if the presence, the key to friendship with God is the presence of God, face to face with God. If those that speak with him face to face are friends. They have unusual access to the person of God. They have unusual access to the Father. They have unusual access to the Holy Spirit. They are they are people that have, because they have been faithful, because they've sought and ministered to the Lord, he has given them a certain level of access to when they, call, when they begin to worship, when they say, I love you, Lord, his presence begins to come. His presence begins to invade because they have uh, touched the very heart of God. And so I pray that this touches you. I pray that you encounter God face to face, even as you're watching. I just pray even now I am part of the anointing for face to face with God. I parted an impartation for you to go deeper, to be drawn deeper into the presence of Jesus, to be drawn deeper into his presence, that you would know him, that you would encounter him face to face daily, that you would set aside Netflix and TV and television, that you would get off uh, and you would, you, you, you know, you're, you're the key to what you're believing for is in the presence of God is seeking his face. You know, stop spending more time in, in front of Netflix and, and, and TV and, and all this other trash than you do in the presence of God. In the presence of God is where your healing is going to come. In the presence of God is where your deliverance is going to come. In your presence of God is where all the, your, the hope, the joy that you're believing for is in, this, in the face of God. It's in the presence of God. You can be, uh, uh, read this whole Exodus 33 chapter. You can be like Moses. You can be one that experiences face-to-face -face interaction with God and encounters and carries his tangible glory and presence. So God bless you. Go share this video. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I bless you. And I pray that you experience God face-to-face. -face. God bless you.